Hi and welcome to my channel Play Not Jane. Today's video is an overview of and almost a tutorial of one of my latest DIY projects, my narrow sofa table. I was really inspired to build this piece after seeing quite a few of these on Pinterest. Also, if you're on Pinterest, go ahead and follow me at Play Not Jane, all one word, no underscores. So let's jump right in. For this project, you'll need a circular saw, circular saw cutting guide, drilling bits, a jigsaw, sander, pliers, screwdriver, speed square, clamps, tape measure, and a pencil. As for materials, you'll need lumber, deco wood screws, L brackets, an old work outlet box, an outlet and outlet cover, appliance cord, stainer paint, and some type of top coat. Here you can see I've laid out most of my tools and some of my materials. I normally don't do this, but I tried it and found that it really, really helped. I didn't waste a lot of time looking for stuff. So I definitely recommend organizing your materials and tools first. I've got my lumber laid out and I actually use 2x6 lumber because that's what I happen to have lying around. I've got my one long piece for my tabletop, two medium length pieces for the legs, and these two shorter pieces I was going to use as brackets in the corners, but I opted to use the L braces instead. I measured my furniture and decided how long and how tall I wanted my tables to be. I wanted my tables to be a tad bit taller than my furniture bags, but not to extend past the end, so I measured accordingly. Once you have your measurements, it's time to cut. Here's another tip. Make sure your lumber ends are square. I just used my speed square to mark a line and I cut before measuring and making my final cuts. You can see that I've pulled out my circular saw cutting guide. I actually made this circular saw cutting guide myself by following a really great tutorial from DIY creators and their limited tools series. I'll leave a link in the description box below. If you're new to DIY or if you just have a really tight budget, the Limited Tools series is a absolute must. Now typically you don't use a circular saw cutting guide for a cross cut, but if you are not confident in your ability to make a square cut, use the guide. Now I actually started with the guide, but I got kind of confident and made my first square cut without the guide. I'm actually still beaming. Once you have your pieces cut, it's time for sanding. I personally deplore sanding, so having a random orbit power sander is right up my alley. I started with 40 grit paper and I only went down to 80 grit. I wanted my tables to really be rustic and rough, so I didn't do any fine sanding. Also, you will see that I'm wearing my work gloves as well as my safety glasses, but also a mask. Sawdust is not your friend, and breathing that stuff in can really do a number on you, trust me. So wear a mask and make sure that you're doing this in a place with really good ventilation. After you get everything sanded, wipe your pieces down with a tack cloth or just a damp rag to remove the sawdust. Then stain or paint. I opted to stain my pieces using Minwax Wood Finish Penetrating Stain and Jacobian. It is an oil based stain and it stinks to the high heavens. So make sure you wear a mask and more importantly, make sure you have good ventilation. It is a good idea to follow the instructions that come with your product if you want a really fine polished finish. But again, I wanted my tables to look rustic so I didn't exactly follow the instructions. I applied my stain with the rag. I let it dry between the two coats, but I did not sand between the coats. I also applied a polyurethane top coat to protect the finish. 
you do want to follow the instructions for your top coat. Once everything is dry, it is time to assemble. Here you can see the L brackets that I used. These are four inch zinc plated corner braces. The braces I used came in a pack of two with the screws included. And I used two brackets on each table. I wanted my legs six inches from either end, so I measured, marked, and attached them using the corner braces. Now, I am not to the most elegant DIYer, so it took a little finagling to get these legs on. At this point in the project, I was really wishing I had a pocket hole jig and a 90 degree corner clamp. They may not have helped, but I was really wishing that I had them. Add those to my DIY wish list. <laughs> now I did use my speed square to help with the placement and the alignment though. Once I got the first leg on, I repeated the process on the other end. Once the legs were attached, I flipped the table over. I wasn't really happy with how loose the legs were attached, so I added a couple screws. Now these screws, they did come with the StarTips driver bit in the box, which is great if you don't have a drill bit set that includes star tips. Because they were step tapping, there was no need to drill pilot holes, which was pretty awesome also. I just drilled them right in, and at that point, the table was really, really solid. Next, I began prepping for the outlet. I started with the old work outlet box. Make sure it is an old work box. You know it's an old work box because it has the screws and tabs and also the bin says so at the store. The new work box is the one with the long nail in the back. You can use a new work box but there will be some extra steps involved in installing it. I don't like extra steps. Now you decide where you want your outlet and you trace the box. Don't trace the tabs, just trace the box. Now I use my drill to make a hole for my jigsaw. Here's another tip, drill holes in all four corners. I didn't and I struggled. It was not fun trying to cut a corner that didn't have a hole pre-drilled. Just take my word for it.
Once the hole for the box is made, it's time to assemble the outlet. Of course, you want to lay out and organize your stuff first. On the back of the box, there are tabs. You want to push in one of those tabs to make room for your cord. The cord I'm using is an appliance cord. It has a three prong plug as well as the black, white, and green wires clearly labeled. The black is your hot, the white is your neutral, and the green is your ground. Not all cords are clearly labeled. If you get a cord that does not have the black and white color coded, look for the imprint on the outer sheathing. The wire that has the imprint is your neutral or white wire. The smooth wire is the hot and the green or bare wire is your ground. Once you've determined which wire is which, it's time to wire up the outlet. You want to thread your cord through that open tab and make sure that it has a little bit of slack so that you can work. If you look on your outlet, you will see screws, holes in the back, as well as some writing on the back. I attach my wires using the screws as opposed to the holes in the back. This is what was recommended to me by our electrician as well as by an electrician at a local home improvement store. If you look on the back, you'll see writing that tells you which screw is for the hot and which is for the neutral. In my case, and probably with most outlets, my silver screw is for my white neutral wire, the green screw is for the green ground wire, and the gold is for the black hot wire. As I mentioned before, there are holes in the back that you can just insert the wires into. Here's the problem with that. Over time, as you plug and unplug items, tension is applied. Eventually, the outlet can be pulled from the wires. What do you have then? Exposed live wires all willy-nilly in your walls. We actually had this problem in our home, that the wires got loose with things being plugged and unplugged. And this. This outlet was broken and you can see the wires are burned. This one actually startled the electrician when he removed it. I mean, we were actually living with something this dangerous. That was really, really upsetting. Especially considering how little time it would have taken to install them more securely. So, yeah, I use screws to attach my wires. So to attach the wires, um, I make a little hook using my pliers and hook the hook around the screw. I looped the hook around the screw so that the hook is pointing in the same direction as the screw moves to tighten. Hope that makes sense.
Then you screw the outlet to the box. Now that you have an outlet wire to the cord, test it to make sure it works. So I've got my outlet and I'm going to test it with one of my lights. I plug in the outlet, plug in my light, and voila! No smoke, nothing has caught fire. It's time to put it in the tabletop. To attach your box, you drop the cord in first, then your box, and then attach the box to the tabletop using the screws that came with the box. And make sure that you put the screws in opposite corners. Attach your outlet cover and voila! You've just built a narrow sofa table with an outlet. I really enjoyed making these tables and I enjoyed making this video showing you how I made the tables. Make sure you click below to subscribe to my channel for more videos just like this DIY project, cooking videos, this week 7, and as always, good old family foolery. Also, follow me on Instagram at plain underscore not underscore Jane. So until next time, be safe. Bye-bye.